What type of environments push human beings to their limit? Where we get to experience human greatness to the utmost extent. Where human limitations are questioned and conquered. The Olympics are one such environment. They enable and incentivize human athletes to compete at the most excellent level through athletic competition. As an economist, I study incentives and what kind of outcomes result from certain types of incentives. And I was thinking about different mechanisms that are essential to human beings and how we exchange. And I would like to, or I was thinking about pushing one of these human mechanisms to its utmost limit. And that mechanism is trust. What does trust have to do with an economy? Well, it is a really important component of social capital that's essential and central to almost every single human action that we engage in, from personal to global. Trust is what allows us and an economy to grow. It enables human beings to adapt, adopt, and invent new technologies. Trust is what allows us to walk down to a taco shop, grab a burrito, and be confident that the ingredients in the burrito are healthy. Well, maybe not that healthy, but they're at least safe to eat. Research shows us that trust, when it is high, economic growth and prosperity are high. And when trust is, is or excuse me, when trust is high, we have prosperity being high and crime and corruption are low. Yet there are a lot of economies in the world that suffer from a lack of trust. Only 19% of millennials here in the United States believe that most people can be trusted. And this is down from 31% of the previous generation. Only 3% of Filipinos and 4% of Colombians think that most people can be trusted. Research on trust generation shows that it's extremely difficult to generate trust. And social solutions and policy solutions for trust generation have mixed results at best. Therefore, I, as a researcher, was on a quest, a mission, if you will, an intellectual mission, to find an environment that not only fosters, but potentially generates trust. Now, the reason I wanted to do this was to overcome human disconnectedness. And trust is easy in an environment that has a lot of rules and regulations, so I had to look outside of that into a community without a lot of rules and regulations. And what I stumbled upon was an environment in the most unlikely place. This environment challenges humans' conceptions of autonomy and governance. This environment, probably more than any other in the world, relies on trust the most. And I had to look no further than drug dealers. Well, not my drug dealer, of course, absolutely not, heavens no, but drug dealers. You see, the world of drug dealing has become technologically sophisticated in the past decade, and most of it has moved online. Now, this is because of technology like blockchain and cryptocurrency and proxy networks. Millions, if not billions of dollars worth of cryptocurrency has been exchanged for illicit goods and services in these type of marketplaces. You can kind of think of it as Amazon's evil twin. Here is a screenshot from a darknet site called Empire Market, and there are various listings. Among them are cannabis, cocaine, and Adderall. Here is another snapshot of that same marketplace, Enterprise Market, that looks at listings of credit card information. You may have got a notification from your bank that they are combing the dark net to make sure that your credit card information has not been stolen and is not being sold. This is exactly what they're talking about. Now, the dark net is a place that is completely unregulated and untaxed. It is a place, a perfect natural experiment for me as an economist to observe human interaction and exchange without intervention. It's a place that allows me to really dive deep into what really makes people tick without third party enforcement. And the dark net does not have access to traditional mechanisms of communication and exchange enforcement. So it has to come up with its own. 
Two of the main components it lacks are third-party enforcement from a legal source and also face-to-face -face reputation building. Let's take the first, which is lack of third-party enforcement. Traditional black markets also do not have access to third-party enforcement, and this is why drug dealing is typically associated with violence. If your drug deal goes bad, you cannot just call up the cops and have them come settle the dispute. You have to bring your own muscle. Similarly, the dark net does not have this third-party enforcement mechanism to turn to if something goes awry. Therefore, they have to settle everything themselves, and they do this in a variety of different ways. One way they do it is that the, platform provi the platforms provide codified rules and regulations to monitor both buyer and seller behavior with regards to the exchanges that they are engaged in. Oftentimes, platforms will no longer sell or promote any type of good or service that they deem to be too dangerous or harmful, like firearms or other weapons. They also settle disputes all in-house. There are monitors looking at all the exchanges between buyers and sellers, and they settle disputes and oftentimes require a party to compensate the damaged party with cryptocurrency. You can also be kicked off a platform if you're found to have violated too many rules or regulations. The second mechanism that the dark net does not have access to with regards to moderating behavior is face-to-face -face reputation building. I want you to think back to that taco shop. You go in, you buy tacos and burritos, they see you, you see them, you build a rapport, and presumably that taco shop would like to continue doing business with you and your friends, so it's incumbent upon them to give you a good experience. You may leave the taco shop, tell your friends and family about it, write a Yelp review about it, and this is how the shop builds their reputation. And you as a customer want to be invited back. You don't want to act too crazy not to be invited back. So both of you are building a reputation that together solidifies the exchange that you are making. On the dark net, people don't have access to a face-to-face -face interaction. That's kind of the whole point. They're anonymous to each other. And it's very difficult to build trust with people you don't no. Therefore, these platforms have to come up with different mechanisms for their users to get to know each other. And they do this in a variety of different ways. One of the ways that they do it is they allow usernames to be linked to reputation for both buyers and sellers. Buyers can write reviews and leave a star rating on vendors that sell them different products, either good or bad, much like Uber. Many of these sites are referral only, so you have to have a certain level of reputation to be able to even exchange at all, and you have to have, be verified that you are a trustworthy participant in this type of marketplace. Many platforms provide forums for you to communicate on and say, hey, this is a really good experience, this wasn't a good experience. Many buyers go so far as to chemically test the products that they buy on the darknet and post the results on the forums to either verify or call somebody out for selling them that they selling them something that they didn't particularly order. So there are these different mechanisms where it seems that people are kind of looking out for each other. Another way that these groups of people differentiate themselves, the vendors in particular, is that you'll come across products that boast that they are fair trade certified, conflict free, or organic. I came across this vendor that said that if you buy opium from them, you are supporting local Guatemalan farmers and not violent drug cartels. <laughs> Interesting advertising mechanism that apparently works. Another way that these vendors differentiate themselves is by offering free samples. They also engage in what's called operational security, and they can do this in a variety of different ways. One of them is through technological encryption, and in other ways as basic as packaging your specific product in something that is relatively stealthy, an innocuous item like a book, for example. I was talking to a buyer recently, and he was telling me about all this different stealth that he had seen, and he said, you know what, the most crazy stealth that I've ever seen when I bought some products off the darknet was a pair of snowshoes. He was like, wow, this vendor went above and beyond to really make this stealthy product here. And so he's all excited. He proceeds to completely tear these snowshoes apart in search of the products that he purchased. Turns out his aunt just sent him snowshoes. 
which were now completely destroyed, unfortunately. So what does this all mean for us? The dark net is a crazy marketplace and by no means it's perfect. I mean, for goodness sakes, they're selling extremely harmful, dangerous, and illegal goods and services on this marketplace. Not only that, they're subject to hacking from within and also being shut down from law enforcement from without. But what's important is to look at the relationship and the transaction between both buyers and sellers and what can we learn from it in this otherwise hostile environment. The dark net could be a very important key to the puzzle of trust generation. I mean, they've come up with solutions to the craziest things. These people live in completely different countries, speak completely different languages. They come from different cultures and creeds. They're anonymous to one another. They don't even have access to third party enforcement. And yet they have been able to create an environment of trust enough to buy these extremely dangerous products from someone you don't even know across the world. The black market, the dark net in particular, tells us that trust can be generated in some of the most challenging places. And me as a researcher, I would like to utilize that knowledge to build more trust in communities and do good with it. So imagine what we could do with this knowledge if we harnessed it to build trusting and committed communities, relationships, and businesses. If we harness the power and the mechanisms of private governance, in-house monitoring, and community accountability to build an economy that promotes human flourishing to the utmost extent. Now the Olympics push individuals to their physical best. And I would like to use this knowledge that we've gleaned from the dark net to push individuals to their best on margins of intellectual capacity, cooperative capacity, and community building capacity. And then perhaps we might not feel so disconnected after all. Thank you.